Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about the Seymour EA9 HMI series panel object list alarms. So up on my screen here, you will actually see that we've already pre-programmed all of our alarms in. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There will also be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So we've created a new page called page 11, called it alarms. And on here, what we did was we took from the um, alarm under our object list here, we took our alarm list and then dragged that onto our keyboard or onto our work area. And when we do that, we get a general alarm here and we have a alarm summary, alarm count and history alarm view. So in this, the first one, what we used was alarm summary. Let me just cancel that and we'll call up the actual item by double clicking it. And you see here, all we've done is change the text size to 12 to make it a little larger for us to see it on our screen. And it, we left everything else the same. Now what we're doing is we're preparing our screens to see the alarms that we're going to program in. So if we under look under display, you'll see that we can actually have the cursor icon, we can confirm status icon, confirm text and active, activate a date and time, confirm date and time, deactivate a date and time. And our date and time and our format of all that can be actually displayed onto our unit. So we also have um, our option tab and our option tab sets our visibility so we can make this visible or non-visible. So we'll say uh, okay for that and that is our um, like we said this is our alarm summary and it show all alarms or we can show just the active ones or deactive ones or confirm so we're going to show all the alarms and then on our next one here we're going to take that same alarm list drag it on and we come up and what we'll do is choose alarm count for this one. Again, our text size is going to be 12 and um, our under display, we have a few different ones we can actually select, but we'll actually uh, keep them all as a default. Then under our option, again, a visibility, which we will not set. So that is our alarm count. So alarm summary, alarm count. Then what we'll do is do one more and which is our historical alarm view. So this is uh, our historical alarm view. And again, text size 12. And under display, we'll keep all this the same as their default. And our, under our option, we have our object visibility option, which we'll leave blank. So that is our three different things that we can have for our alarm list. Now, we also have an alarm, uh, our call alarm screen which is actually our button right here. So we drag that over and when we click on it, we'll see that we have our alarm call screen. This will actually call up a, a pre-programmed screen in our system that will actually display alarms. So we set the color. Um, we can have alarm summary or alarm count. We'll leave it at alarm summary. Then under our option, we have our visibility. And in this particular case, we can actually put passwords in this so that we need a password in order to see those alarms or go into them and either uh, confirm them or um, acknowledge them. So we'll just say okay to that. So now what we've done is we've actually set up our um, alarms on our screen, what our, we want our screens to be. Now, the next thing to do is if we go to our um, panel, and uh, our setup and our panel manager, or we can go function and then panel manager. Uh, what you'll see here is that my alarm is set over here and this would be my call alarm screen. So this is my default of what we get when we hit that um, call alarm screen or that push button that we just programmed in. So we have alarm style, we're gonna put the default well, you have classic, so we'll believe on default. Our alarm queue size is 99, alarm uh, display time is five, and alarm banner text size is 
uh, 9. So if we want, we can just hit preview and that will actually preview what our alarm screen is going to be. And this is without programming anything actually on the screen itself. So this is an internal system um, screen that will actually pop up for us. So we'll just hit that X to exit that out of there. So that looks good, but we can then change it anytime we want. So we'll just hit okay. So that is our call alarm screen now program. Now our actual alarms are programmed through our event manager, that database. And that event manager database can be activated or accessed through our main menu database. And you see event manager database. Or if we look under the uh, function tab on our navigation screen, go to database and you'll see the event manager database. When we click it, what we do is we come up with the event manager uh, window and this is a very powerful uh, aspect of this HMI and what you'll see is that we can add event managers to each of these uh, units or each of these uh, systems and what we currently have now is we have three alarms set up you can see our alarm here and they were capable of doing a lot more so if we were to uh, click on this and we'll hit edit you can see here now at my um, event edit um, display will come up and you see here that we have an event name is MC 800 bit on which is our first alarm tag screen that we're going to program and we'll say here the tag name MC 800 our bit of state our bit state will be set to on so when this bit turns on that's when we want our alarm to activate and when it activates it actually uses language one our text will say mc 800 is turned on at and then we give a time and the time comes from these uh, icons here that we click and we can set so on at this time and our uh, date is set right here so here we say and then we have also these icons down here so show alarm objects or show in alarm objects. So this is the objects that we just programmed in on our screen. So they will be shown there. And then we have one that says display. If you want this alarm to actually show up on our actual display itself on every page, it's on the bottom part of that page. We can do that by just hitting that button and then we can set our text color and background color. And then our action. Now it defaults to zero one, which is alarm but we can add a lot more actions to this event if we wanted to by hitting the plus action. You can see that we have alarms, which is default. We, we can activate sounds. We can uh, do email um, message box. We can change tags or copy tags, change screens or capture the screen. We can uh, do an FTP uh, server. We can do math and we can change backlight if we want. So there are several different actions that we can perform in this event manager. But in this case here, we're going to be setting just the alarms. So let's close that. And that is how we do a an event. So if we look at our second one, let's edit it. And now on it, what we have is um, we have our MC801 and we'll, we're calling this the event name MC801 bit off. And what you'll see is that um, here, after I set my tag, I go to my language one again. My text is gonna be MC801 turn off at, and then again, my date and my uh, time or time and date. In this case here, we're gonna show the alarm objects as we did before. We're going to require confirmation. That means that when the alarm comes off, it will still be displayed until someone confirms that that is a, is a valid alarm. And then we again, we're going to turn on our display so we can see that alarm on any page that we have programmed. So we'll close that. And our last one, our last alarm that we have on our page here, we'll edit again, is actually our uh, register and it's MHR 800. And it's a range of zero to 1000 range. So our tag here is gonna say MHR 800. We're gonna do outside range. 
we also have inside range. So this is what um, transpires if the value minimum of zero and maximum of thousand. So if it falls outside that range, so less than zero or over 1000, then our alarm will be activated. And under our alarm itself, we have language one, MHR 800 outside range um, at this time on this date. And then here we actually have our um, tag information. So we're gonna actually put the tag onto the display itself. And by hitting that embedded tag, you can see that it's a numeric. It takes its value from MHR 800, unsigned decimal. We do leading zeros. Um, we can actually use the 1000 separator with a comma if we want. Um, we don't really want that. And we can put a display in front or behind that value. So we can tell units, etc., that we want to display. So very uh, powerful uh, options that we have in our event. Let's close that. And then again, we're going to show in our alarm objects and we're going to show on our display. So close that. So that is our event manager. So we'll say OK. And now what we can do is actually, before we transfer it to our um, unit, our HMI unit, we will actually simulate this program. Put simulation, start. And here is our um, simulation. We'll hit the bezel around it so it looks more like our, our actual unit itself. And you can see that our bit here, this is our display, it says it's turned off already. So let's just turn that off to make that um, unit go away or that display go away. There we go. Now if we go to the select screen, we go into the alarms. You can see that our bit two turned off at this time and we can confirm that, which confirmed at that time. And then we can or confirm all that we can clear all. And then under alarm uh, history, you see that bit one turned off. So let's go to 800 and we can turn it on and you see it's turned on at this time. You also see at the bottom of the screen. And we turn it off, it goes off. Right? And because we didn't confirm it on the first one, we're not getting confirmed when we hit the confirm button. And on our history, our account, we have one of each now. Then if we go to our MHR 800, this is our value that has to be between um, zero and a thousand. So let's put in 1000 and one when i hit enter you'll see that it's outside the range now that we specified of 1000 so because of that it activates our alarm so everything seems to be working well and now let's uh, uh take that and put it back below that let's put 500 in there when we do the alarm then disappears so let's look at our select screen and we'll go to our alarm history and this shows now our history of all the events that taken place. So that seems to work and fine. Then we'll also do our call alarm screen. When we do that, our alarm screen is called up and we can see that we have our outside range, our deactivated uh, time. So again, everything looks like it's going well. So the next thing we'll do is we will actually transfer our program to our HMI. So let's uh, exit our simulation and we'll hit uh, send. And we'll just show our hardware here. And what we have is our, our uh, T10CL EA9 uh, display screen. So let's send this uh, information over. We're using our ethernet connection. So transfer. Uh, we'll save our changes. So we're transferring all that information over now. And that just takes a minute. So the important thing to realize with alarms is that we set up what we want the alarms to look like. Then we program our, our active alarm events to actually display what we want. So let's hit OK there and close.
Now we're, we have our display all powered up and ready to go. And what we'll do now is we will uh, call up our simulation for our PLC. And all we have here to si simulate our events or our alarms in our Do More Designer is when X0 turns on, MC800 turns on, which activates the alarm. When X1 is off or stops, then we want to activate this alarm too. So MC801. So we, again, this acts on, the, on when it turns on. This one acts when it turns off. Then we have a always on, which will move uh, WX0 into MHR800. And right now it's at about 282 or 828, sorry. And then we have our end of our, our program. So that is our entire program to operate these three alarms. So let's look at our uh, simulator here. And so the first one was X0. And so if we turn that X0 on, what you'll see is now we have a alarm down here, which actually says MC is turned on. If we go to the select screen, the alarms, we can see up here that MC800 is turned on. So that seems to be working. And then we turn that off, it turns off. And again, we have MC800 is turned on. That's out our alarm count. Then what we'll do is turn off X1, which then causes the alarm as well. Again, it displays at the very bottom of the screen as well as it displays on our alarm summary. And now our message count is one and one. So that seems to be working fine. And then we have our slider switch here. As long as I'm in the range, everything's fine. As soon as I go outside the range, you'll see that I have an alarm that says that our MC800 outside range. If I go back in the range, it comes off. And you'll see my previous one, MC801, is still in red because I have not confirmed that. So let's just confirm that. We'll go down, confirm. So everything's good. And everything we can clear that. So there's a lot of different uh, buttons that we can uh, connect to actually manipulate that information around. Now let's go to our other screen, our alarms two, in which we have our history of events that just took place. And you can see here where my let's look at MC801. We turned off here, and then a little bit while down after another alarm came in, then we actually. Um, we confirmed that alarm at that time. So um, we can go back in history and actually look at all the alarms that came in. Now we can hit the call alarm screen and this is the default one that comes up on the system. And you can see here, there are my alarms that I have uh, programmed in. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us, or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually see, receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.